I absolutely love what I do. I adore the Austin and our employee that we work with. I love waking up every day, getting to work with clients. I would not imagine doing anything else, you know, maybe a couple things. But with that said, it's work. I've had several conversations with older people who have retired and uh, they really loved what they did during their career. Loved it. And the common phrase is, you know, I was in real estate and I've never worked a day in my life because of it. I think they're all lying. Essentially what you're saying is that if you find the right thing, you'll feel totally fulfilled. You'll never question if you're doing the right thing and you'll always be happy about what you're doing. And that's just not true. And again, I love what I do. I mean, ask my therapist. I have a severely unhealthy relationship with work because I could just work seven days a week, 12 hours a day for years and not even blink. But that's not healthy and it causes things like burnout. You see, life is separated into all kinds of different experiences. We have work, we have play, we have rest, but it's so common for entrepreneurs to feel like work just bleeds into life because it's true. Sometimes we just, we can't help it. And the culture that we're part of in entrepreneurship is often so enamored with 10xing our life, 10xing our business, trying to get us to do more and more, take no days off, work 24 seven, and it's just exhausting. So what do we do to combat this idea that we have to work 24 seven, to, to still love what we do, but to not feel held captive by it and to not give in to this false hope that what we do for a living might be bigger than what it really is, work. Okay, I'm gonna be honest, I'm still figuring this out. I, I don't have all of the answers, but I wanted to document this moment because this morning I woke up and I felt no motivation to work. When we work on something that we love, we often think that we'll have endless passion, endless inspiration to keep going forever and ever. But the truth of the matter is that it that's not how things work. We get tired, we get burnt out, we have to take care of ourselves and rest. But you might be saying, I run a business. I'm, I'm supposed to do everything. I have to deliver things to my clients. I have to take care of my employees. I have to make all the decisions. It's overwhelming. You need to take a break. You need to actually walk away from work, you know, preferably somewhere outside in the sunshine and the grass. But taking a break away from everything so that you can actually be more productive later on, so that you're better equipped to live life and find that motivation and find that inspiration for the work that you're doing. Now, don't get me wrong, taking a break is actually kind of difficult for someone who loves to work. I think that we actually need to improve and do better at setting our own expectations, as well as setting the expectations of clients and our employees and the people that we work around and our spouses and our kids and, and everybody involved in our lives. What are their expectations for you? Expectations not only help us to manage other people and our clients and provide better services and help ensure that we're doing things the way that we say we're going to, keeping our promises, but it also helps us to define the way that we operate internally, the way that we take care of ourselves, the culture that we're creating. Again, those expectations in any company are kind of like an unspoken guideline of how things should go, how you should operate. I know you didn't ask for practical advice, but I'm telling you something anyways. When you're on a call with a client, lay out the expectations that they should have. Help them identify exactly what they're going to see from you so that they can keep you accountable as the client and so that you are meeting and providing them with a service that allows them to feel uh, taken care of. So make sure that the expectations that you're setting are realistic 
and set them early on. Ultimately, they are going to be impressed when you finally deliver on what you said you were going to do. That's really all that's needed for a successful business. If you do that enough, you'll get referrals, people will love working with you, and ultimately your business is gonna grow. Think about it, right? If you're, if you're a graphic designer and you say to all of your clients, I have a 72 hour turnaround policy. Any project that you give to me, I'm going to finish it in 72 hours. What happens when the 73rd hour rolls around and that project isn't completed? You become unreliable. The reason that your clients aren't actually happy, it's usually not because of the work, but it's actually because of the expectations that you set when you first started working with them. If those things are out of balance, it can have a lot of negative effects. You'll start feeling burnt out quicker, you'll be exhausted by the time you're finished with work. Ultimately, work and life will start to blend together and it's really hard to untangle these things. Trust me, I'm doing it right now. The point is that you need to build into your routines that, hey, I'm gonna take a break at some point or I'm gonna be finished at this time. Communicate those expectations to your family, to your employees, to your partners. When we talk about expectations and we hear from other people who have worked for 40, 50 years in their life that working every day at something you love means you don't work at all, it sets the wrong expectation. Instead, I think you should work at what you love if you're an entrepreneur building a business for a problem that you wanna solve or a thing that you really love to do for other people. I think you need to set that expectation that that is work. And while work is good and something that can be fulfilling, it's not everything. And there needs to be a time where you can walk away, take a break, delegate, find other opportunities and other engaging things outside of just work. I absolutely love older people. Trust me, I have 72 older people held captive 